Now on 12 News at 10. For a dump truck that ran over a vehicle. A deadly dump truck crashed on the freeway. Hours later, crews still work to clear the scene. We're live with what we know tonight. Monkeypox on college campuses. They go to dance clubs, they go to raves, and they have sex. The warning doctors have for students returning to school. Wrestling on the side of the road during a freeway arrest. 12 News asks the sheriff what the video doesn't show. When I go buy a little bit of weed, I'm buying the schools and the roads. We'll take a look at some new poll numbers that show overwhelming support for legalization in the Badger State. And the security warning from Apple. The one thing you should do right now to stop hackers from controlling your device. Leading the way with important local coverage. You're watching WISN 12 News at 10. And there is breaking news off the top tonight. Milwaukee Public Schools making masks optional for all students and staff starting tomorrow. That is based on Milwaukee County moving into the medium transmission category. Masks have been required since Monday when schools on the early start schedule started classes. MPS will reevaluate its masking policy in one week. And first at 10, a violent and deadly dump truck crashed during the afternoon rush hour. News Chopper 12 shows the scene after it happened today along I-894 near 27th Street. That's near the Mitchell Interchange in Greenfield. 12 News' Kendall Keyes is covering this for us tonight live at 10. Kendall? Within the last hour, we've seen crews load both the car and the dump truck involved into this crash on tow trucks. Our newsroom got word of the crash around 4.30 this afternoon and take a look more than five hours later, the eastbound lanes of Interstate 894 are still shut down. Yeah, we were getting multiple 911 calls for it. It's going to be a dump truck uh, that uh, versus a car. The start of a tragic scene in the eastbound lanes of Interstate 894 near 27th Street. Heartbreaking and horrifying. We might have a full closure here. 894 eastbound lanes shut down for several hours following the impact between a dump truck and a green car. Exclusive video from Matt Salemi in News Chopper 12 capturing the wreckage from up above. Then you look at the dump truck itself and you can see the front axle ripped off, the grill ripped off, the front bumper ripped off. Look at the uh, condition of the cement wall. It is buckled in and bowed in. Onlookers stopped in traffic seeing the deadly scene. Saw uh, the helicopters, saw uh, the freeway blocked off and concerned. I was the first one of us three to see it and I was just completely mortified by what I saw. The Milwaukee County Medical Examiner's Office confirms one man is dead. Completely totaled. Looks like one was on fire and a dump truck's completely demolished. Missing its front end, its back end. I don't even know how that, something like that could happen. Kendall, do we know anything more about the person who was killed? Joyce, not yet, but the medical examiner's office does tell me there's an autopsy tomorrow, which should reveal more information. Kendall Keyes reporting live in Greenfield tonight. Thank you. Now, around the same time as the dump truck crash, medics responded to this RV crash. It happened just blocks away near 35th and Loomis in Greenfield. News Chopper 12 flew over that scene, and you can see a tire from the RV is missing and debris scattered across the grass. We are still working to learn what happened and if anyone was hurt. Right now, the White House monkeypox response team is preparing nearly 2 million additional monkeypox vaccine doses for states, and that triples the country's current supply. The CDC confirms more than 13,000 infections across the nation. And doctors are preparing for possible outbreaks as college students return to campus soon. Caroline Reinwald with that part of the story tonight. As students prepare to return to campus, the possibility of monkeypox spreading looms. I guess I'd be concerned if people weren't open about it, you know, if it becomes like a public thing you don't talk about. I think I'm just mainly concerned of people's lack of awareness of it. Marquette has a web page dedicated to information on monkeypox and in a statement, UWM says it's been closely monitoring the spread of monkeypox in consultation with the Milwaukee Health Department and says the university will be developing appropriate protocols and communicating them to the UWM community. Dr. Ben Weston with Freighter and the Medical College of Wisconsin says universities must have an action plan. I think it's important to have a response ready. So if somebody has it, are you going to be able to test? Are you going to be able to isolate? 
Are you going to be able to contact trace and work with your health departments to do that? Currently, doctors say those most at risk are men who have sex with men and have multiple partners. But experts say that will evolve and change. That it is not specific to this group. And if and if not controlled, it will not it will definitely make its way to all different groups. Because the question isn't if monkeypox will spread, but when. I'm hopeful that there won't be, you know, a huge outbreak in colleges, but I'm sure we'll see some outbreaks here and there in dorm type environments. But we know college students also go out to bars, they go to dance clubs, they go to raves, and they have sex. And those sort of things can spread this disease through that skin to skin contact. Let's bring in 12 News Caroline Reinwald tonight, live on Marquette's campus. Caroline, what can people do to prevent the spread? Yeah, with students returning to dorms like the one here behind me on Marquette's, Marquette's campus as early as next week, doctors are warning people to avoid close skin to skin contact and sharing bedding with anyone with a confirmed case of monkey pox. And if you do see a rash to get tested, see a doctor immediately and quarantine, those rashes can last up to two to four weeks, Derek. Very good information. Caroline Reinwald reporting live. Waukesha police arrested a man who compared himself to the cartoon character Speed Racer. Authorities say this is a car stolen out of Whitefish Bay. Waukesha police spotted it early Monday. The driver refused to pull over, driving onto I-94 eastbound. Police used stop sticks and three different pit maneuvers before pinning the SUV near Brookfield. According to a criminal complaint, the accused driver, 22-year-old Quincy Bondman of Milwaukee, told police, quote, I was doing like Speed Racer off the crack. I thought I was in the movie and all that. He faces several charges. In Milwaukee, a witness told 12 News a driver hit a school crossing guard. It happened in the intersection of 6th and Harrison outside of St. Augustine Prep. Police tell 12 News the driver stopped and is cooperating with officers. In a statement, school staff say they are praying for the crossing guard's speedy recovery. Body camera video shows Racine County deputies wrestling with a man on the side of I-94 yesterday, just minutes before deputies say they found cocaine, cash, and a gun in the car. Right there, you can see the video showing the deputies K-9 attacking. The man then breaks free and gets back into the driver's seat. The two-minute video shared by Racine County Sheriff's uh, ends as one deputy aims a taser at the man. What happens after that? Can you tell us what we're not seeing? The continued struggle to get handcuffs on him and get him brought under control. I want to be able to show our community a sampling of what occurred. I also have to balance the other half of this as the integrity of the investigation, which is active and ongoing at this very moment. Deputies identified the man as Hezekiah Saffold. Charges are pending. A mystery tonight surrounding human remains inside an abandoned building. A man shooting video for a YouTube page found the remains August 10th near MLK in Burleigh. The medical examiner is now asking for your help identifying the person who is believed to be a man. The remains had on a large dark coat with orange lining, a white shirt with a Pfizer logo and black pants. Investigators they also say they found these rings on or near the body. There are five rings and the person also had a tattoo of the word King on their left forearm. If you can help identify the man, call the number on your screen. The Republican who challenged Assembly Speaker Robin Voss in the primary now says he will be a write-in candidate in November. Voss defeated Adam Steen by just 260 votes in last week's primary. Steen told supporters today he is waging a write-in campaign in the Racine County District for several reasons. Chief among them, he says, the timing of his endorsement from former President Trump when it came to those who voted absentee. 2,700 people voted prior to my endorsement. So I believe the President of the United States carries a 76% yeah. approval yeah. rating in this district. So I do believe that the people having the right information will be able to make the right decisions. In a statement tonight, Voss said Steen moved into the district just to run against him. And now that voters have rejected him, he apparently can't take no for an answer. The owners of the old Northridge Mall property have until 5 o'clock tomorrow afternoon to make security upgrades. Those upgrades include fence repairs, cleaning up brush and graffiti, and adding 24-hour security. 
Owners face a $2,000 daily fine if they don't comply. Milwaukee's fire chief Aaron Lipsky called for the action at the site, saying four arsons in the last month have put his firefighters in danger. To the COVID pandemic here at 10, Wisconsin health officials reported nearly 1,600 new cases. The state's seven-day case average dropped to 1,417. The first night of Milwaukee Irish Fest, and if my memory serves me right, Mark, that is the Red Hot Chili Pipers. Yes. All right. One of the city's biggest ethnic festivals. 12 News' Kristen Pierce is live tonight at Henry Meyer Festival Park. And Kristen, the event just wrapped up for the night, but there's more to come. Joyce, it just wrapped up just moments ago. You can see people still behind me just starting to trickle out of here at Henry Meyer Festival Park. This is day one of four. Still plenty of fun ahead of this festival. And this was sort of a soft launch, but starting tomorrow, 16 stages of entertainment. Another town. Get up, get down. You gotta see the show. Irish Festival is back. And it's a great time. If you miss this, you miss everything. Thousands of people crowding into Henry Meyer Festival Park to celebrate Irish culture. I love Irish Fest. We're having fun. Yeah. Music, art, dancing. Really good? Really good. And food, but it's not just about having a good time. Well, it's the culture, and that's what makes Milwaukee rich. And in one of the culture. largest. Culture. And, the largest and I love it for that reason. This is not one of those green beer and green t-shirt festivals. Milwaukee has always striven to show the, the culture, the history, the knowledge. General admission is $23, but we have ways to save you money on our 12 News mobile app. Reporting live at Henry Meyer Festival Park, Kristen Pierce, WISN 12 News. Coming up in Weather Watch 12, you know the great weather can't last forever when rain returns to the forecast next in Weather Watch 12. Wisconsinites buying weed in Illinois next to 10. The new poll suggesting most people think marijuana should be legal in the Badger State. People jumping into stores three to five miles per hour. Uh, comes in, bashes into one of those potted plants right there, knocks it over. A driver's wrong turn takes her onto a mall's second floor. One thing should have stopped her, but it wasn't there. And the major security warning for Apple users, the one thing to do tonight to make sure you can avoid being hacked. 